Whoa, 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 whoa. You thought flossing was gonna change your life? No. Let me share with you 10 things that will actually change your life. And flossing every day is definitely not one of them. Now, in reality, there are lots of little things you could do that improve your life. Reading, investing, saving, hiring a coach, doing therapy. And flossing is not really something that's gonna change your life in a big way. But in this video, I thought I would share 10 little things that frankly can have a giant impact on your life. What's up guys, it's Alex Hine over at Modern Health Monk. So let's jump in. Thing number one, keep a resonance journal. During one of the worst breakups of my life. One of the best silver linings that came out of that was that I learned about this exercise that came from this manifesting person. Now, I'm not a huge believer in this whole manifesting thing, but one thing that she said to me was really a game changer. And she said, just to do whatever excites you the most over the current year, because that will be a very profoundly healing force. So I applied this in my own life and instead I kept a journal and I just did it for 90 days, one season of the year, a quarter. So every day, all I did was I wrote down what's exciting me the most right now. Even if it's like connected to any goal, even if it's not connected to anything else I want in life. What is exciting me the most right now? I just kept the log of that daily. And what came out of that was I found new hobbies, new passions, new friends. I got rid of old friends. And I started doing different things in my morning, like going to a cafe instead of just getting ready for the morning. And in the evening, like taking up salsa and bachata class instead of just going home. And some of those things are still with me to this day as my happiest activities in my schedule. Now, this is the foundation of the free goal setting worksheet that I've put together. It's the first link right below this video. And what that worksheet is, is it helps you figure out the exact thing. What's the vision for the year? What are little daily habits that are likely to result in that vision happening? And then in terms of like quarters, 100 day periods or seasons, what do you want to have happen? So check out that free worksheet because that's something that actually builds off of this video very, very well. Now, a close follow up to that is number two, which is track your hunches. And this is really your gut instincts. Now, when I got to journaling about these sort of very subtle internal feelings, it made me think a lot about something else. A lot of the biggest and best things in my life came out of a gut feeling. For example, I started doing this out of a gut feeling to stop writing content on the internet and try a different medium. On top of that, writing my books, like Master of the Day, came out of a gut feeling that I had to write something like this. And of course, there was all this logical objection and fear and all of that, but the gut feeling was still there. That if I could write a book about how the process, a tactical approach to the process goals of life, if you could do that, it will really help people. And it really has. So these days, I just keep a little journal of what is that little birdie saying? Do I need to take a trip for my health? Do I need to pick up a new hobby? Or is that friend someone that I feel like, hmm, they have some dark side that may ruin my reputation by association? Or maybe even if I go on a date with this person or I have in the past, they may look a certain way, but the gut feeling is to stay away, to trust that feeling. So this exercise will train you in more of that intuitive, subtle body in life. And lots of the biggest things like your career and your choice of a mate or partner in life come from that gut feeling. Thing number three, spend five minutes every morning thinking about your goals in life. Now for me, I have a very little nerdy sheet. And on front of that sheet is just a list that says what I want. It has a list of the outcome goals that I want in my life. And on the bottom, it just says the character traits that I have to work on. Now, when I flip that sheet over, the other side says, what are the daily rituals and habits most likely to make this what I want come true? Now, what I've seen is that just by having five minutes every day dedicated to the goals in your life, that by itself is a profound redirecting force. Almost like most of us are rudderless ships where we wake up, we eat what we want, we drink our coffee, maybe read or listen to the news, go to work, everything's on autopilot. But no one is actually the captain of the ship, steering consciously and deliberately in a certain direction. And that is something that just by itself, just reading it without even majorly changing your life, just by reading that, that can change the direction of your life without a question. Because your subconscious is now working all day long. If you said, I would like to write a book one day, guess what? You may buy a book on becoming an author or on writing or buy an online course or go to a local you know, bookstore that's hosting a meet and greet of an author and that begins your writing career. So I deeply believe that this starts a subconscious process that can change your life. Little thing number four, don't use your phone the first hour and the last hour of the day. If you're like a lot of people, you probably wake up, your phone has an alarm on it, and so you turn off the alarm, maybe you turn off airplane mode, and you go right to messages and social media. Now there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think you're that terrible of a person, because I've done it plenty of times myself. But what I will say is, the opportunity cost, to my mind, is great. Because that first hour of the day, if you don't 
don't even touch your phone besides stopping the alarm. You can look at your goals. You can stretch out a little bit. You can make a healthy breakfast. You can read a little book or even work on your number one goal. It could be fitness. It could be dating. It could be working on a business. It could be applying to new jobs to get a raise. That first hour of the morning is a liminal time, just like the evening time is. And those times to me should be used for introspection and being deliberate. Because as we get into the busyness of day-to-day -day life, it becomes a lot harder to find space. And space is where the muse visits you, where those gut feelings, those instincts, those thoughts about what I really want from life can come to visit you. And if you're too busy by not being present, by scrolling through hot chicks on Instagram or scrolling through puppy videos, again, nothing wrong with it. But if you're too busy doing that, you miss out on one of the best windows for productively guiding your life in a certain direction. Little ritual number five is reading 10 pages a day. For me, when I talk about putting your phone aside for an hour in the morning, one of the main rituals that I do is I review my goals for five or 10 minutes, like I said, and then I read for 20 minutes. Now in particular, I'm reading books towards my number one goals most of the time. But sometimes it's just a goal that's evergreen. Like for me, one of my goals has been to work on my character and my personality, you could say. Because I do feel like as an introvert, I'm not inherently a very strong people person. So I've actually been reading How to Win Friends and Influence People by Carnegie for months at this point. Every single day, I just keep rereading the chapters from start to finish, start to finish. And that's been incredibly enlightening for me because like one of my medical mentors said, why read a hundred books by lesser people when you could read one by the master? So that first part of the morning and the evening are prime times to read. Now, if you only read 10 pages a day, basically do the math. If there's about 220 pages in a book, every three weeks you've read a full length book if you only read 10 pages a day. So think about what that looks like over the course of a year or five years or a decade. You have much more diverse life experience and knowledge about life. Little ritual number six is keep a scoreboard in your kitchen. Now, here's what I mean. If you just say you have the goal of losing 20 pounds, getting a raise and making 60 k instead of 40k and building new friendships just because you write that down doesn't mean that goal is likely to happen because you could just as easily get up get ready you go to work and now suddenly you've forgotten about those three goals because you have to you're at work right you have to generate these outcomes so what do you actually do to make sure you're on track day to day i actually put this little scoreboard and i always keep it in my kitchen or in my bathroom now i've even written these things on the mirror in my bathroom at one point and the point of having a scoreboard is that it is somewhere top of mind so if you're allowed to do this in your workspace put the scoreboard right on your work desk if you're there nine hours a day or eight hours a day. If it's at home and you're frequently going to the bathroom or your work desk or your kitchen, put that little scoreboard there and just list out again. I pulled a list of what I want on that little sheet and then I put it right on this little whiteboard on my desk, right? And one in my kitchen. And for me, the point of that is so that I'm truly reminded of what I want to happen. Little ritual number seven, spend five to 10 minutes in the morning just stretching out while you listen to something inspirational and positive. For years in the worst phases of my life, one ritual has held true to be beneficial, listening to something inspirational. Now in particular for me, that's always been Earl Nightingale. And there's a little YouTube video I'd recommend called Earl Nightingale Reads Either the Strangest Secret, Earl Nightingale and lead the field or a third is Earl Nightingale reads Think and Grow Rich. So Earl Nightingale is reading the essential principles of that book Think and Grow Rich and it's about 40 minutes and what I would do is I would just lay down on the floor you know stretch out my back or stretch out my neck stretch out my hips and I would just listen to this inspirational audio and it would jog my memory about goals and being driven and being deliberate and always endlessly thinking about what I want and just by doing that every day if you're in a really really tough phase of life where you're rebuilding and you are trying to reinvent. That is something that will keep your spirit and your motivation high. Because the morning for a lot of people when life is hard is one of the least productive time periods. You're tired. You're unhappy. You're not motivated. You don't want to do anything. So to make yourself use that wisely is not so easy. So I found that the combination of physical movement with an inspirational audio is a big boost to your mood and emotion. Little ritual number eight is have living things where you live. I know this is a little bit of a side path here, but there's something to your house or your home or your little apartment being your sanctuary. Now this goes back to resonance, that very first topic we talked about. And there's really a whole book written about this thing, you know, Marie Kondo's, what is it, Art of Tidying Up. But basically every piece of furniture, every piece of clothing, everything where you live is a deliberate act of resonance, right? It makes you feel more alive in your life. And as a result, this is like an energy snowball. Like when you love where you live and you love your friends and you love your work and you love the city you live in, your life becomes so high energy that it cannot help but change in a better way for the better. So for me, plants are one of those ways to improve resonance and make where you 
you live feel good. But in general, resonance in terms of like the feng shui of where you live is a big factor in actually personal energy. Now, little ritual number nine, give yourself one season or even a hundred days to achieve some of your goals. For a lot of us, there's that saying, we overestimate what we can achieve in let's say a year, but underestimate what we can achieve over 10 years. Now, what I found is that for a lot of goals, they're not so short term, right? Transforming your body or finding love or building new friendships or starting a business. These are not goals in the weeks. They're really goals in the months to years. And so how do you actually set up a framework that both holds you accountable so you're taking action, but also is long enough to give you time so that you're not discouraged. And in my mind, it's best to operate like these big companies where they have quarterly goals. So once a season, every 90 days, you come up with, these are my goals. So 90 days, I'm gonna try to lose 10 pounds. In 90 days, I'm gonna try to shoot my first YouTube video and upload it. In 90 days, I'm gonna work on having a brand new friend group. And what I found is that if you just track quarterly goals in a notebook somewhere, that is something that is long enough to see progress, but short enough to hold you accountable. Not like giving yourself a full year where you can just fall off the course in two months, but the perfect sweet spot of the two. Literal ritual number 10. I'm kind of lying. This is a big one. Don't make life decisions from fear. Now, why I put it as a little life hack is because it is the little small voice that is afraid, right? It's the intuition, the gut that says, I really want to do this thing. Travel, write a book, become a YouTuber, go to medical school drop out of medical school. But courage is difficult, right? If all your parents for years or generations have wanted you to get to America and then be self-sustaining as a doctor or a lawyer and you hate those professions, what do you do, right? You either cave or you be brave and you find another way to reach that goal. If what you've always wanted to do is be a YouTuber but you're terrified of being on camera, what do you do? You listen to the fear and your life stays small or stays the same or you push through it. What do you do if you've been single for a long time and you don't even know how to date or speak to the opposite sex anymore and you don't want to be single anymore? You're ready for something serious and real or you want to get married. But every time you try to approach that pretty girl or talk to that guy or you're worried because you're a woman and you're like, is it weird if I take the initiative? All of that is fear. And everything that will keep you the same in life is listening to fear as opposed to the voice of excitement and potential and love and what you really want to do. So in terms of small things that will make the biggest difference, it is understanding that all of the changes you want to make that will make you a better person or will help you reach your goals, standing in between you in that gap is just fear. And if you can learn to respect the fear, listen to the fear, but not decide based on the fear. Not decide that I'm going to do what you want fear. I'm going to do what I want. Your life will become an explosion over the coming years. And soon you'll find out that you have indestructible confidence because of the fact that you've conquered so many little fears that now you can see your life 10xing and you're excited to see what that looks like. Now, something really excited that I've launched recently has been this new Monk's Courtyard. This is a series of online programs on how to design your dream life going forward. Now, we already have a few of them, but I want you to check out the journaling one, the strategy pages journaling program. It's the link below this video, it's pinned there. And it's something that will help you figure out how to design your best year ever using journaling. So you can check it out right there below guys. And then before you go, I also have a related video on this topic right up here.